Hi Bobcats, this is Ms. Lee, and today's lesson is on classifying rational numbers. Please make sure you have your notes and that you're filling them out as we go along. A rational number is any number that can be written as A divided by B, where A and B are integers, and B does not equal zero. Okay, so rational numbers. Rational numbers can be written in fraction form because remember, this bar, this fraction bar right here means to divide. So it's A divided by B, where A and B, meaning the numerator and the denominator, are both integers. And B cannot equal zero. Now, I don't know if you've learned this before, but you cannot divide by zero. That just cannot be done. So you have to make sure that the divisor, or the denominator, B, does not equal zero. And we've already learned what integers are. We know that integers are whole numbers and they're opposites. So they're positive and negative whole numbers and zero. So we want to see if these examples are rational numbers. We want to know, can we write them in fraction form? Well, our first example is a mixed number. Remember, mixed numbers have a whole number and a fraction. And we can write this in fraction form by changing this mixed number into an improper fraction. And I have a little trick that I like to do. I call it Texas backwards. It's where I write the initials for Texas, which are T and X, like such, where the T actually represents addition and the X represents multiplication. And I call this Texas backwards because I go backwards. Instead of starting at the two, I start down here at the bottom, five, and I go five times three, which is 15, and then I go 15 plus two, and I get 17. And then the denominator, of course, stays the same. So three and two fifths, written as an improper fraction of 17 fifths. These are equivalent. And now I have written this rational number, or I've written this mixed number, in fraction form, therefore it is a rational number. Okay, what about this next, this decimal? Can we write this in fraction form? Well, we've already learned how to do that. If you read the decimal, it reads six tenths. So there you go, it is in fraction form. And yes, you could simplify that if you wanted to, to three fifths, but either way, it's still in fraction form, therefore decimals are rational numbers. So mixed numbers are rational numbers, decimals are rational numbers. What about whole numbers? Are these rational numbers? Well, how can I write a whole number? How can I write this 32 in fraction form so that it still equals 32? Do you remember? Hopefully, you remember that all you have to do is put it over 1. 32 over 1. It's in fraction form. Does it still equal 32? Yes, it does. So whole numbers are rational numbers. What about negative numbers? This is negative seven. Is this a rational number? Can we write this in fraction form? <laughs> Definitely. We can do the same thing we did with the whole number and just put it over one. It's still gonna equal negative seven. So to determine if a number is a rational number, you should be able to write it in fraction form. And here we've shown that mixed numbers are rational numbers, decimals are rational numbers, whole numbers are rational numbers, and integers, or these, the negative numbers, are rational numbers. A Venn diagram is a visual representation to show the relationships between the different groups. And by different groups, I mean the different classifications of numbers. Okay, so here is a Venn diagram, and there's several different Venn diagrams. This is one type of Venn diagram, and you can see that it shows the whole numbers, and the whole number circle is inside integers. That's because the integers also include whole numbers. Then you'll see that both whole numbers and integers are inside rational numbers. That's because rational numbers include integers and whole numbers. And then there's another one that's not here that I'd like for you to go ahead and put in. And we're going to call it natural numbers. Natural numbers are the counting numbers. They're the numbers that you first learned about in elementary school. You were probably 
and preschool, maybe when you started learning, it's, it's the numbers you count with using your fingers. One, two, three, four, and so on. Those are natural numbers. And then whole numbers include the natural numbers, but they also include zero. And that's where the difference is. A lot of times we just start with whole numbers. We don't include the natural number classification. We don't separate it. But it's good for you to know that there is a natural numbers classification that doesn't include the zero. It's just the positive whole numbers without the zero. So we're going to make our own Venn diagram and we're going to place the examples in the correct classification or the best classification. So the first thing I want you to start with is start with one circle in the middle of your paper, kind of small, not huge, and we're going to title it whole numbers. Then you're going to draw another circle around it like you see here and label it integers. And then a larger circle outside the integer circle and we're going to call that rational numbers. So pause the video and go ahead and draw your Venn diagram as you see here. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and place these numbers, or these rational numbers, where they go, or the best classification. So think about 75, it's a whole number, and where's the best classification, or the best place to put 75 in the Venn diagram? It would be in the whole number circle. Now, it is a whole number, but you can tell the whole number is inside the integer circle. So 75 is also classified as an integer, and you can see that the integer circle is inside the rational number circle. That means that 75 is also a rational number. So 75 is a whole number and an integer and a rational number. The best classification would be under whole numbers. Okay, negative three. Where do you think this one goes? This one is an integer. Remember, integers are all the whole numbers and their opposites. So whole numbers are positive and the opposites are the negative. So negative three is not a whole number because whole numbers are not negative. It is an integer and it's also classified as a rational number. Okay, what about three-fourths? Is three-fourths a whole number? No. Is it an integer? No. Because integers are whole numbers and they're opposites. It's a rational number. The best way to remember rational numbers is that they're the part they have parts. So rational numbers, I'm gonna bring it here. They include the parts. So that would be fractions and that would be decimals. So include the parts. Whole numbers don't have any parts. And integers include the opposite of the whole numbers, so there's no parts in integers. So any number with a part can only go in the ra rational number classification. Which means down here our 35 hundredths would be a rational number. 101, that's the whole number. I'm gonna come back to this one. Let's start up here, zero. Zero is a whole number. Ah, now this one's a little tricky, 16 fourths. They're trying to trick you here. Can we simplify 16 fourths? We can. It simplifies to four, four over one or just four. So it simplifies to a whole number. So the best classification for 16 fourths would be as a whole number. It's written in fraction form, but when you simplify it, it simplifies to a whole number. That's why we're classifying it, or we're saying the best classification is a whole number. 14 and 1 tenth. This is a rational number because it has a part. 7 and 1 fifth. This is a mixed number. It has a part, so it would be a rational number. Negative 8. Well, it's a negative whole number, so that would be an integer. And then we have negative 2 and 5 tenths. A lot of you are going to want to put it as an integer because it's negative, but look at it. What does it, yes it has a negative whole number, but what else does it have? It has a part, and the only place parts can go are with the rational numbers. Okay, so remember whole numbers are also considered integers and rational numbers. 
Integers are also considered rational numbers, but not all integers are whole numbers, are they? If they're negative whole numbers, then they can't be a whole number. It's just an integer. All right. So we're going to tell whether each statement is true or false. Go ahead and use your Venn diagram to help answer the questions. All integers are rational numbers. So looking at my Venn diagram, here are my integers. Are all integers rational numbers? They are, because the integers are included in the rational number circle. So they are also considered rational numbers. So that one would be a true statement. Second one, all integers are whole numbers. Okay, so are all of these integers whole numbers? No, this negative three is not a whole number, is it? Because it is negative. The negative eight is not a whole number because it is negative. So not all integers are whole numbers. So this one would be false. Some rational numbers are integers. Some rational numbers are integers. So here is the rational numbers. Does it also include integers? It does. It's not saying all rational numbers are integers. It's saying some of them are. So that one is a true statement. No positive numbers are integers. No positive numbers are integers. Well, integers in the integer circle alone, I see negative numbers, but I also see the circle for whole numbers. And these whole numbers are positive, and they are considered integers because they're inside the integer circle. So this one is going to be a false statement. It should say some positive numbers are integers. And the last one, a rational number is an integer. A rational number is an integer. Is that true? Here's the rational numbers. Is the rational number circle inside the integer circle? No, it's not. Remember, rational numbers include integers, but they're not all integers because integers don't have the parts. Only rational numbers have the parts. So this one is going to be a false statement. To make it true, you could say some rational numbers are integers. Okay, given the set of numbers, here's the set of numbers which are classified as integers. Okay, let's think. What do integers include? They include whole numbers. So which ones up here are whole numbers? We have 10. This is negative 5 fourths. That's improper. We could change it back to mixed number by dividing Tybo. 5 divided by 4. Only one group of 4 can be made from 5, and I have a 1 remainder. So that means as a mixed number, this would be 1 with 1 remainder out of 4. 1 and 1 fourth, and it's negative. So it has a part, so it's not a whole number. 1 and 25 hundredths, it also has a part, so it's not a whole number. And negative 2, it's a negative, so it's not a whole number. So the only whole number is 10. But that's not all that integers are. Integers also include their opposite. So the opposite whole numbers are like the negative whole numbers, which would be negative two. So the correct answer choice would be B, 10 and negative two only. And our last one, which best describes the classification for the following number set? So here's our number set. This either one, they're rational numbers, two, they're integers, or three, they're whole numbers. Well, we can tell right away they're not all whole numbers because we have negative one, which is an integer, but there's also what? Parts, aren't there? So they're not whole numbers, they're not integers, that leaves rational numbers only. So the correct answer would be A. Nice job, Bobcats.